Sam Woodfill. Woodfill was one of the rare soldiers who had been with the Army long before the start of World War I. Having enlisted in 1901, Woodfill was 35 when, in April 1918, he was sent to war. Woodfill and his regiment joined in the Argonne Offensive, which he described as 46 days of rain and mud and death and general hell such as no American army had ever faced. In the early morning fog of October 12, 1918, Woodfill led his company in a long line toward the village of Cunel. As they crossed a field, the fog lifted and three machine gun nests let loose. While his men found cover, Woodfill took his rifle and began to stalk the machine gunners. An expert marksman who'd been hunting since the age of 10, Woodfill put his extraordinary talent to work, clearing out machine gun nests. He found a spot where he could take cover while keeping the three machine gun nests in sight. One was set up in a church tower, two to three hundred yards away. Another fired from an abandoned stable to the right, and the third was straight ahead under the cover of forest. He focused on the church tower first. He couldn't see the gunner, but he aimed behind the flash of the machine gun. He fired, and the machine gun was silenced. His next target was the abandoned stable. Again, the gunner was hidden, but again, Woodfield shot where the gunner should be, and the machine gun went quiet. To reach the nest in the forest, he had to stalk around to the side, taking cover in holes created by shelling. One hole concealed a pocket of mustard gas, which he inhaled before realizing it. He avoided a fatal dose, but now his eyes were stinging and his vision blurry. Still, he moved on, creeping quietly until he was hidden from view, but in a spot where he could spy the face of the gunner in the third nest. Woodfield fired, and the man went down. Another took his place, and he fired again. Two more took up the machine gun, each killed by a single shot from Woodfill. Finally, the remaining two Germans fled. His men looked on with awe. Woodfill signaled them to move up. He then returned to the hunt. Each nest he cleared improved the odds of his men surviving the day. He found two more machine gun nests past Canal, and he took the five-man crew operating each with five well-placed shots. Woodfill had taken out five machine gun nests and the two Germans in the trench without taking an injury. But the exposure to the mustard gas took him out of fighting. He and his men rejoined the rest of the American forces, but he was quickly moved to a hospital. By the time he had recovered, the war was over. In February 1919, General Pershing, the commander of the US forces in Europe, presented First Lieutenant Woodfill with the Medal of Honor. Two years later, General Pershing remarked that Sam Woodfill was the greatest single hero in the American forces. But America had no shortage of heroes in World War I, such as Marine Corporal John Pruitt. Like Freddie Stowers, Pruitt was also part of an American unit temporarily attached to the French Fourth Army. Corporal Pruitt's unit was on loan to the French to assist them in punching through the German defenses in the Champagne. On October 3rd, Corporal Pruitt and his fellow Marines attacked the Blanc Mont Ridge, called the keystone of the arch of the main German position. In the course of the battle, Corporal Pruitt single-handedly attacked two machine guns, capturing them and killing two of the enemy. He then captured 40 prisoners in a dugout nearby. 
But though he survived these actions, which earned him his Medal of Honor, he was killed soon afterward by shellfire. Pruitt was one of only 19 people who received two Medals of Honor, one from the Army and one from the Marine Corps, both for the same action. After World War I, the rules were changed so that only one Medal of Honor could be awarded for a single action. <laughs>